welcome back everybody we are finally going to install CentOS I'm gonna be installing this distribution on a virtual machine that's because Pookie and I got a little, a little carried and well actually we did what most good IT's should do we tested the product before we put it into production so for the purposes of this video you can follow along using a virtual machine or an actual bare metal server okay so we gotta name our virtual machine something so how about we gotta name it something fun so uh, how about test OS sent not dollar get it sent OS it's not dollar OS get it huh but you can't forget about the underscores because that's what makes it IT related alright so after we're done mounting the ISO file for the OS onto the hypervisor we're gonna have to assign a maximum disk size to this uh, gigs but we want to pump that sucker up to about 40 okay so we gotta name our virtual machine something so how about we gotta name it something fun so uh, how about test OS sent not dollar get it sent OS it's not dollar OS get it huh but you can't forget about the underscores because that's what, that's what makes it IT related all right, so after we're done mounting the ISO file for the OS onto the hypervisor, we're gonna have to assign a maximum disk size to this. So the default is 20 uh, gigs, but we wanna pump that sucker up to about 40. And using the slider on the next screen, we can also adjust the amount of RAM. For this video, we're gonna be doing two gigs. So the next thing we're going to do is make sure that our network adapter is configured properly. In order to do that, you click on network adapter back in the hardware section and you make sure that NAT is being used. That way your VM could use the DHCP server currently running on your network. Usually that's your router. All right, now let's not be pedantic. I know that not everybody's DHCP server is running on their router. Some people have a dedicated server for it. Some people prefer static IPs, but you know what? I mean, in this case, for Soho and for personal use, most people just use their router. Now we click the play button to spin up our VM. Bear with me, folks. I know it's boring, and it is a long boot. We should be coming up on the installation prompt here soon, and it will ask you to pick a language. What kind of English do you speak? Or don't speak? Or maybe do speak? Installing CentOS is like starting a scavenger hunt, but imagine if you didn't know anything about what you were looking for and you needed to rely on the internet to tell you what to do. The first step in the installation process is to set your root password. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using fish sticks one two three. Now we're going to go to network and hostname, and we're going to turn on the Ethernet port. So you want to make sure that you set it to DHCP. That way, it grabs an IP address from your DHCP server, like we talked about before. Now go to installation destination and confirm the disk you want to install the operating system onto. In order to define the installation source, we need to input the repository URL. You can get that straight from the screen or you can copy it from the description down below. If you don't want to use a proxy, then we're done with the installation source. Next, we have to wait for it to verify. Now 
Now we're going to go down to software selection and pick all of the functionalities that we need CentOS to perform. In our case, we're going to be picking a few of the basic ones. Things like Windows File Server, File and Storage Server, FTP. Maybe we can throw in some network file systems. Remote management for Linux, of course. Who wouldn't want that? Oh yeah, performance tools. Yeah, I think we'll, we're gonna use some of those too. All right, let's be done with that and now we can move on. Now throw on a movie from your massive Blu-ray collection, sit back and relax because this download process is gonna take a couple of hours. We're gonna watch uh, Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs followed by maybe seven pounds with Will Smith. I feel like being sad today. Oh, don't forget about that EULA. Well, first, let's uh, let's make a user. Just go ahead and put your full name. And a password. Now, this is different than your root password. This is your user password. The root is the root administrative privileges that you'll be using for a lot of the things in Linux. But best practices tell you that you shouldn't be using root to log into anything. Just use it when you need it principle of least privilege and all. Now I think that's a three-liner EULA. Compare that to every other one you see. Alright, looks like we're all done with everything. Let's finish the configuration and launch CentOS. Finally, right? So there is our user account. Now we log in with the password we just created. Remember your user password, not your root password. And keep that user password secret, and especially the root password. You never want to share that root password. And that's it. Welcome to CentOS. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it great? CentOS is part of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux family. Its end of life is scheduled to be December of 2021, but that's okay because, as we all know, Linux is very stable and it can run on this version for a very long time. We picked it because of its high transcoding capabilities and it tested better, th tested better than Ubuntu Server and some of the other ones that we tested out. Plex even tested better on this than it did as a container on, say, Unraid. Okay, so now we can actually head over to the Plex website and download Plex for Linux and specifically for CentOS and we can try to install it here today. So navigate on down to the Plex downloads section. Where you should find 
Linux or whatever operating system you're using, and you can choose your distribution. Here you can see Fedora, CentOS, and SUSE. They're all part of the RHEL family, so just pick uh, the one that's corresponding to you. Obviously, in this case, we're going to be picking CentOS. You know, I think we might just save that for the next video. This one's already kind of taking a little bit too long. Uh, and installing CentOS isn't that exciting, so we'll just we'll wait. We'll install Plex for the next video. Stick around, and you'll see it. Wait for the next video. So for reasons not entirely known to us, the T610 decided to die. And those last few moments of the video uh, where I go to install an update on to CentOS, those were actually the final moments of the server caught on a capture card. Um, it's giving out these uh, voltage regulator errors, and that may have something to do with the RAID controller. It may have something to do with the uh, back pain for the, for the uh, hard drives. It may have something to do with the power supply, uh, or it may just need a completely new motherboard. It says to reset the CPU, but that doesn't work. I uh, checked everywhere online, and it just... Um, 